you asked me last week uh, what the uh, process of uh, doing the wood, processing it to guitar quality uh, in your shop, in your kiln. And uh, I uh, like to answer that. It's kind of an not an easy one when you're not in the shop and you don't have your kiln right there by your side or you're standing in it. When you get the wood to, to your mill, there's three processes. After you get it out of the woods and to, the, to, your, to your mill and to your shop, you have to be really careful to get it processed as quick as you can. I mean, two days is a long time, sometimes if the climate is right or wrong. So I always thought that I had to get it done within about one day and usually stretch it out to two and maybe three. But I was always pretty lucky to keep that color and to keep the, uh, the freshness in the wood. What I would do is I would uh, take a block of wood and they, they look very much like this. I mean, we show, I showed you these before. They look very pretty. Uh, you, you make a block that's a little bigger than this, and, but you make them, they're rough. They're rough sawn on your, your, res or your bill. You have usually a band saw mill. That's one, you know, you pack around. You can find the more in the building mills. But what I have is a, was a uh, one that you, you just cart behind your truck. And you could take it any place you wanted if you would. And I did that a lot of times. I would take it to the woods and, and, and process the wood and the waste from my blocks out there. But, but in most cases, I did it at my shop. So I used my, my, my mill and I would get these one inch by eight inch by 24 inch blocks. And those blocks would be book matched. And man, I didn't want to lose one of those because if I lost a book match and they went, one went off this way and one took a trip this way and you couldn't find them, you just lost a couple hundred bucks I mean, <laughs> or more depending on the quality of that block. So I would have marking pencils in my pocket right at that time. Uh, and I would put the line across, put them together where they book match, where they open. And I would put marks across the end of it. I, I would also number them with a little code of where I got them. So I would do that because I don't want to lose a book match. You're, you lose money when you do that. So then I would put them after I got several, several hundred of those blocks put up I, uh, in the rough, then I would lay them out in the day of the, I would lay them out for several days and and at that point they would actually uh dry just enough if it's raining you have to put them under a cover of some sort but you got to leave the air on them you want them to air dry for sometimes i would if it really damp wood i want them to dry for maybe up to a week because at that point the wood really starts to be able to take a kiln a lot easier without sometimes cracking it now just before i get them in the mill i i touch the end of the board with a with a, with a saw just to trim it up. Sometimes I do that before I set them out there and I paint them with what they call, it's paint, a special uh, paint that you put on the end of the board. It's called anchor seal. You can buy it at any wood store. Many, many people that do wood uh, use that. And at that point, you paint the end of every block. You paint the book matches. So it's a wax-like white and it, and it turns clear when it's dry. But what that does, that keeps the end of the box from cracking. The set, next thing after that, after you've got those, let's say there's a hundred book matches you've just got out of that tree. Now you, you go to your kiln and you, you, put, you stick them. You stick them to where there's a space between them so you have air so that the block is kind of independent by himself. I always tried to keep at least four or five inches between the, the blocks. And, and I would stick them with plastic because plastic won't stain the board. If you stick them with, ward, with wood, you'll get stained. You'll see that mark clear to the point where you build that guitar. You'll see where that other board laid up against that other one. So don't, don't stick them with anything but, but plastic. I used to take uh, a quarter inch uh, a, a gray pipe for plumbing uh, plastic. I would just cut those on my bandsaw right down the middle, put them down. They had a nice round top where the board would feel good. And I would use two of those for a sticks under a board, boards, you know, different amount of them. But that is the process. At that point, it's, it's a whole different game when you get to the end of them and taking them out of the kiln. You turn them, of course, every... I, I turn them about twice and that, what that means is say I have a hundred book matches in my kiln and uh, 
and I got it exactly that temperature I want. I want that temper. I want that dehumidifier to be taking that moisture out. There's a real fine point there that I won't get into today, but but that's that's a good part of what a block, how a block comes to be a really perfectly dried all the way through. Remember, you have to make sure that the center is as dry within at least 2% humidity than it is in the middle. I, a lot of people don't get there. I've uh, had wood that broke on guitars or when I did, it was the cause of some of that. So I always made sure that my wood was at a certain humidity. You have to have a humidity deal. I had all that stuff at my mill and, uh, and make sure that the blocks are at the right humidity when they come out of that kiln or while they're in it. So you turn the blocks, leave them in there. It's usually about a six to eight week process if you do it the right way. And when they come out, you stack them again on sticks uh, so that they're separated from one from the other. And they also press each other and keep, keep the blocks more straighter that way uh, because they have a tendency to twist a little no matter how you do it. This wood, remember, is twisted because that's how it's got its beautiful figure in it is years and years of standing out in that wood, out in that forest, and, and, and those little trees. I'll explain that to you too also later. It's a neat, neat thing how the maple comes about from six or seven or eight little trees to grow into one, and that's part of the, the process that causes the uh, figure. So I'll get into more things later. Thank you again for listening and that to my answer to your question of how the process works after you get the wood out of the law out of the woods.